And then I heard this is a system being put in place this year. And then I heard wisdom that isn't wisdom. Wisdom that gets caught up in the worldly way of doing things. He said you're going to see a sign coming this fall. Hey y'all this is God said. So I wanted to give a short intro to the video you're about to watch and let you know it's about the topic of of the racism. I wanted to make a couple of quick points ahead of time just to kind of give some clarity to some of the things I say in the video. I had someone on my team that I trust watch this video before posting it and they gave me some feedback and said some of these things aren't clear. So I wanted to make sure that they are. So I want to make a few statements. Number one, sadly, racism still exists in the world today. And obviously it also exists here in the United States. But something else I want to say ahead of time is that your skin color does not automatically make you a racist. Sometimes the media will try to sway things in one direction, or they'll generalize and say everyone over here is like this or everyone over here has experienced this. But it really comes down to the individual. So the message you're about to hear is actually going to be potentially addressing people in three separate camps or a combination of camps. The first one is people that are asking the question, how can I overcome racial prejudice if that's something I'm still dealing with? Some people may find themselves in that place. And that's something that God actually wants to bring resolution to and healing to. It's something that he wants to change. The second camp is people asking the question, how should I respond when somebody labels me as a racist? Yet I know that him not, this is something that can happen because of the culture and the media and some of the ways that they paint a broad stroke across a lot of people instead of focusing on the individual. The third camp is addressing people that are asking the question, how can I forget and how can I move forward when I've been the victim of racism? So whether you fall into one of these camps or none of them at all, the thing that the devil is trying to do today in our culture is, is trying to get us to stay angry so that the hurts don't heal. But God is wanting to heal hearts today. He's wanting to heal the hurts and he's wanting to start that healing process within the Chai church where it needs to take place. So, in not trying to jump on any of the bandwagons on either side that the media is pushing, or any of the narratives that they're trying to sell. I'm just trying to share and deliver the message that God gave me. One last thing before I share this message, some great resources that I believe may help if you would like to do more of a biblical dive into the issue of racism and how the church should respond to it today. I would highly suggest a playlist on YouTube and it's called Kingdom Race Theology and it's by Dr. Tony Evans. He also has a book of the same title, Kingdom Race Theology. The links to both of those resources are going to be below, and I believe Dr. Tony Evans is one of the most profound voices talking about this issue today within the church. Some of the things he talks about within that playlist and within that book are the sin of racism, race and the church, race issues in America today, and then also things like white guilt. So if you're interested in any of those topics, I would encourage you to go listen to that playlist and check out the other resources that he has available. So without further ado, let's jump into this message. Hey y'all, this is Troy. So I'm going to be talking about a prophetic word that God gave me today and this has to do with a sensitive topic the issue of racism this is not necessarily my opinion in a lot of ways it's what god has given me to say the lord actually gave me a word about something that's happening in the culture and a sign that we're going to see take place at a certain time i believe this is here in the united states but i also believe this word will apply more generally than that so there's this sign that God is speaking about. 
but I also believe that God has given me a very simple message to share when it we scales. Comes to how do we deal with this issue that is so prevalent in our world today, and has been something that our nation has struggled with for such a long time. This is what happened. I was actually watching a TV show that I enjoy watching for the most part called The Andy Griffith Show. So, it's an older TV show, and it actually was playing on the air back when a lot of the talk ends. Civil rights stuff was actually happening in the United States, so it was an interesting time for a show to be on the air, and you can see some interesting things happen in the show, in that it ran for eight seasons and then was cancelled, then they rebooted it, and they called it something else. It was called Mayberry FD. The distinction I noticed between the original series and the dare reboot was there were no African-American main characters in the original series. But then once it was rebooted, they actually brought in some African-American characters, which I thought was really awesome and obviously was needed. It was a very interesting time in history where a lot of things that needed to be changed were beginning to change. But this is what happened. So I was watching this show, and in the show this character, Andy Griffith, is supposed to be a very wise person, a wise individual. I'm going to share with you a dream I had about him in a second that God gave me a while back but he's almost like a King Solomon type of character in the show. In one episode, his son, Opie, actually refers to him as King Solomon. And so I was watching the show, and I heard the Lord say this. Suddenly the Lord said, Solomon, quote unquote, Solomon is returning. He said it in stride. And then he said, a movement toward racism awareness through a simple system instituted in this country. So I believe this is something that's going to be taking place in the nation that we're going to see. And then I heard the Lord say this, this is both good and evil, meant to tackle racist remarks, but also a hard stance that keeps people from speaking freely. And then I heard a barbed wire fence keeping those in the wrong doing right, but also potentially hurting the random passerby who shows no sign of doing wrong. And then I heard, this is a system being put in place this year. And then I heard, wisdom that isn't wisdom, wisdom that gets caught up in the worldly way of doing things. So this is where I believe God is making the distinction as Christians, we should be the least racist people on earth. Okay, we should be the most loving, the most caring, the most kind-hearted, generous individuals. And unfortunately, what we've seen is that the history of the church has, a lot of times, not been the case. If there's any racial prejudice that's happening in our hearts as Christians, that's something we need to deal with with the Lord. We need to allow the Lord into that space to change that, to heal that, to transform us to make us look more like Jesus. But at the same time, I believe that some of the ways that the culture is trying to go about fixing some of these issues that we're having are not necessarily the best. And so this is what the Lord said next about this system that they're putting in place. People are more interested in making a power play and a statement than protecting people's rights. Going to say that again, people are more interested in making a power play and a statement than protecting people's rights. What I believe the Lord is saying is that on the outside, it's going to look good and it's going to look like people have the right motivations, but behind the scenes, they're not necessarily going to be doing it for the right reasons. When it comes to morality, this is the difference between doing the moral thing or the right thing outside of a real relationship with God and doing the right thing inside of a real relationship with God. I remember doing the quote-unquote right thing when I didn't know the Lord for the wrong reasons and I'm not saying imperfect, I'm not saying that never happens today. But what started happening when I came into a relationship with Jesus Christ 
was he began to actually transform me from the inside out. Suddenly, my heart began to change, and I wanted to do the right thing for the right reasons. Now, you know, it's not like I just want to be seen as morally good. I want to know in my heart that I did what God was asking me to do and that I treated people the way that he wanted me to treat people. And so the Lord said this next, you're going to see a sign coming this fall. And so I believe he's talking about this system. And I got this impression after this, that this could have something to do with the school system and teachers at their desk or something like that. But then I heard after that, a faulty system. So I believe the Lord is saying that something behind this is not set up right. It's not going to necessarily work out the way they want it to. And the motivations are not necessarily coming from a great place. But the Lord gave me this simple encouragement that I want to share with you today. How do we actually fix this issue? Right, it starts in the church. You know if something's going to change in culture, it has to first change in the church. And here is what I believe. We cannot fix an issue like this if Jesus is 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 removed from the picture. And that's why the world's way of doing things always fails eventually. The Lord gave me this dream a couple of years back, I believe. In the dream I was talking to the actor and the guy that helped create the Andy Griffith show. Andy Griffith. In the dream I was talking to him, and this was a prophetic dream. I woke up out of it and I could feel the presence of God, and I knew God was trying to make a point. I was talking to him in the dream. I said, hey, I'm actually from the future, so somehow, you know, I went back and I was on the set of the show, and I was like, yeah, I came from like 2020, you know, and I came back here, and he got all excited in the dream, and he said, wow, tell me what it's like. Tell me what the world is like. Tell me what society is like. Things are so much better, right? And he was saying that because I could tell that he here yeah, was attempting to pass down wisdom through this show, and some of the moral lessons that they taught, and that kind of stuff to a culture. He's trying to impact a culture. And he said, because of the things we're teaching now, like, things have got to be so much better then, right? And I just looked him in the eyes in the dream and I said, no, no, it's not better. In some ways, it's changed, but in a lot of ways, it's gotten worse. There's a lot of evil in the world still. And he just couldn't believe it. He was dumbfounded, you know, and the reason is because the worldly way of doing things is never ultimately going to work because the heart hasn't been changed. If the heart is not changed, then the problem's not going to go away. And only Jesus can ultimately change the heart. That's the big difference between Christianity and all of the other religions. Jesus is able to change our hearts in a way that we're never able to change them on our own through all of the study, all of the good habits, all of the effort, all of the time. It's never enough. But the thing that really changes our hearts is when we find out that the God of the universe loves us so much that he was willing to come down to the earth as a man, and he was willing to live a perfect life and go through temptation, trials, struggles, and hardship. And then at the end of his life, he was willing to give himself up to be crucified on a cross. And he did all of this for us because he loves us. And when we hear that message and we believe it, it begins to do something to our hearts. It begins to melt our hearts where we say, wow, what kind of love is this? I've never known anyone that would love me that way. This is what Philippians 2, 3, 8 says. Now, this may seem like a high standard, but we've got to consider that the standard is being set, but we're not able to meet it. It is not in our own efforts. The only way to meet this standard is to humble ourselves and allow Jesus to come take over, to allow him to change our hearts from the inside out. 
It says, Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility consider one another as more important than I. Yourselves. Man, that is a high standard, consider one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. He's saying to do this because this is the way Jesus lived. This is how he was. Then it says, Hoo hoo, as he already existed in the form of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a bondservant, and being born in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, death on a cross. So even though Jesus had rights, and even though he had this status as is, God he didn't hold on to that, Instead, he set it aside for a time and came down to live among us because God loved us and thought about our needs above his own. Man, I just sense the Holy Spirit saying this today. Many of us are saying to the Lord, Lord, I can't do that, that's too difficult. And I hear the Holy Spirit saying this so clearly. He's saying with my help you can. Let me come in, let me empower you, let me change you if it's necessary. Let me transform what's dead into something that's alive. What's old into something that's new. Let me give you a new way of thinking about things. Let me give you a new way of looking at things. I hear the Lord saying this world is never going to figure it out. No matter how hard they strive towards perfection and moralism. And I hear the Lord saying, but I've already given you the key to change. It's looking at Jesus. It's looking at what he's done for you. It's looking at the cross. And it's not looking away until it changes you. And what happens, y'all, when this change takes place is, we begin to look different. Verses 14 and 15 say, Do all things without complaining or arguing so that you will prove yourselves to be blameless and innocent children of God, above reproach in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you appear as lights in the world. We're going to look different to the world. They're going to reject even the good things that we try to do because of us. The way that we're doing them, or because our motivation doesn't align, because we're not stepping in line with the way they do things, or whatever it is, we're going to stand out as Christians. But here's the amazing news. We get to stand out together as Christians. No matter which country we live in, no matter our ethnicity, no matter our ethnicity, no matter our status, no matter our past. As Christians, we are all part of a family. This is something you're never, ever going to find anywhere else in the world. This is what Ephesians 2, 12, 16 says. Remember that you were at that time separate from Christ, excluded from the people of Israel. Now, this is talking about the difference between the Jews and the Gentiles. But we can apply it more broadly as well to all believers. It says, and strangers to the covenants of the promise, having no hope and without God in the world. We were all at that place at one point, but this is what the Lord did. Verse 13, But now in Christ Jesus, you who previously were far away, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace who made both groups into one, and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall by abolishing in his flesh the hostility, which is the law composed of commandments expressed in ordinances, so that in himself he might make the two one new person establishing peace. How did Jesus bring peace between all people who are willing to come to him? It's through the truth that none of us deserve to be in his family, but he brought us in because of his love, his grace, his kindness, and his forgiveness. And that truth is able to unite two people that on the outside seem to be completely different, but on the inside, 
They're both filled with the same love, the same hope, and the same Holy Spirit. This is verse 16, and that he might reconcile them both in one body to God through the cross, by it having put to death the hostility. This is the last thing I'm sensing. This is God's plan for the church, that we are going to shine as lights. But this is God's desire, that we would be united in such a way that the world would even look in and say, How did you all fix this issue? How are you all so at peace with each other? How are you all so united with each other? How is there so much love between Christians? And we can point to the answer. We can say it's because of Jesus. For one another as a witnessing tool to shine the light of Jesus Christ to the world. So I hope this video has been encouraging. I love you so much and I'll see you next time.